Hello, and welcome to the Professor Podcast with Ruth and Claire. Each episode, we talk about a particular topic in the life of a professor. Ruth is a visiting professor at a large university in Ireland, and Claire is an associate professor at a primarily undergraduate university in Northern California. The purpose of our podcast is reflection, so we bring something we think is working and something we're working on to discuss. Welcome to the Professor Podcast with Ruth and Claire. I'm Claire. And I'm Ruth. And today we're talking about overwhelm. But before we do that, Claire, how was your week? My week was good. Ralph and I are getting ready to move out of LA. We've been here for... overwhelm. (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) (laughs) We've been here for maybe four months, I think, um, as part of our sabbatical. And right now I'm in Ralph's recording studio that is completely dismantled and um, no longer available for recording because it's all boxed up. So, um, but we are moving back to Arcata where um, we're going to be for the rest of our sabbatical. At least that's the plan. We are totally wild and free and flexible and maintaining that. But we're really excited to get back to Arcata. That's awesome. But you have my absolute sympathy because the middle (laughs) bit is so hard. Because the beginning bit's fine because you're like, yes, I will just categorize everything and then I'll pack the things and it's fine. And that middle bit when you're like... Okay, but what about all this other stuff that doesn't even have a category? Where is that going to go? That's, it's just a lot. <laughs> I know. Ralph and I have been talking about, and I really like this idea, and actually I think it helps with overwhelm, <laughs> is um, 80%. It's like we can get 80% of planning out our packing pretty easily. Going for that last 20% of like, but should this sock go in this bag or that bag, <laughs> getting all the way to 100% of effective planning, that's going to be a whole lot extra of an issue. That last 20% of planning is so much harder than the first 80% of planning. So we're trying to not worry too much about it. I think this is called the 80-20 principle. So anyway, that's been helpful to remember, like, it's okay if we don't have the socks until later. It's not the end of the world, you know? So Well, I love that because like all of these things are not linear. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Because like, it's the same, not quite 80-20, but you know, when students are like, well, I got 40% without trying. So therefore, if I do a tiny bit of work, I'll get 100. You're like, that's not going to work that way. Like the later percentages are Mm -hmm. harder to get. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So do you really want them? And knowing that they'll take more effort. Yeah, totally. Yeah. So what about you? How was your week? Well, my week... um, I had such massive overwhelm. It was oh, no. because I actually like I had an MRI and I never knew how claustrophobic I was oh, until no. I was in an MRI tube and it's so bad. Oh my god. And so this time I was prepared and I was like, please give me all of the medicine mm-hmm. because I like one time I went without medicine and absolutely like I just I can't even like and now it's like I'm claustrophobic, but also really scared of MRIs. You know what I mean? It's like now added a thing. So, oh no! I know, and so I was like, "Give me all the medicine," and I took like quite a bit of medicine, and then got in the tube, and I was like, "Nope, nope, nope! I have to come out. I can't do this." And like completely freaked out, and it was just so weird because I was like, "Can I take more medicine?" And the guy was like, "The medicine, like." your mind can beat the medicine. Because mm. I was like, I don't know why this is happening because I've taken the medicine. He's like, I was like, wow, you're right. Like my mind is really powerful at being mm-hmm. really claustrophobic. Mm-hmm. But it was just so like, I had the experience of just experiencing like full body terror. Oh, but like I managed goodness. to get through it. I got through it. Oh, so I was good. Because like, he was like, well, do you want to reschedule? And I was like, no, I really like, I don't want to do this again mm-hmm. another day. Like mm-hmm. seeing, as I've, you know, I can't really explain it, but it was an interesting experience of like both being absolutely terrified and kind of observing that and getting through it. So that's wonderful. That's so awesome. Yeah. So it's kind of, it's interesting that we're doing this this week. Cause like, I, like I, I wish it was a more positive story, but it was right. Cause I got through <laughs> it, it and I did it and I don't have to go back, but mm-hmm. um, it was just very interesting. It's the first time I think I was really observing like, wow, I am freaking out, mm-hmm. but being able to have that thought and then being mm-hmm. able to kind of get through it. So that's yeah. wonderful. I love, Mm -hmm. you said too, your mind is really powerful and that's so true. And that's that taking that step back and observing that seems like it was really important part. Well, I think that's how the guy really helped me because I was like, 
Oh, because I was just waiting for the medication to do its magic. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, oh, no, like I'm going to have to do something. Like I'll have to Mm -hmm. deal with this myself. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So that was really helpful. Really cool. And I love that you said, no, I don't want to have to come back. I want to go through it right now instead of having it be a continual thing that you're afraid of in the future. Oh, God. Yeah. And the dread, like Mm -hmm. it's not going to get less, Mm -hmm. you know, Mm -hmm. anyway. So, yeah, that was it. Well, that's exciting. Do you have a quote for us? <laughs> yeah. yeah, so I have a quote for you, and it's nothing to do with anything, but it was just, <laughs> like, so I have this, there's this author, Ira Levin, I might not uh-huh. be saying that correctly, but he's so amazing, and it's like, anyway, so I was just thinking about him the other day, because he writes these amazing books that are almost like novellas, Uh huh. but... Like, I think, so I read a couple of his books, and then a few years ago, my foster mom gave me The Stepford Wives, and I was like, mm-hmm. is this him too? Like, he's written <laughs> so many books that have been turned into amazing movies too, and you're like, oh my god. Like, anyway, he's very prolific, and it's very interesting, because, like, I can't really engage with horror movies mm-hmm. at me all, because I'm too scaredy cat, but sometimes, like, that kind of, it's, like, such an interesting commentary on societal things, like The Stepford Wives, in a way that you couldn't do if you were just telling a straight story. That okay, wasn't like, interesting. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Anyway, so he has this really good quote and it has nothing to do with anything, but it's a, it, it's a good one. So it's from Rosemary's Baby, which he also wrote. So it was <laughs> <laughs> every time I'm like, another one I read, really? But yeah. Okay, so the quote is, like so many unhappinesses, this one began with a silence in the place of an honest, open talk. And oh. I was like, yes. Yeah. That's good. So many times. That's really yeah. good. Mm-hmm. Well, and as a chronic oversharer and sort of sometimes I don't know, but I think honesty always is the best policy, basically. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's so great. here we're really good. talking about a nice relaxing topic today. <laughs> <Go around. laughs> yeah. So tell us, tell us why we're talking about this, Ruth. Well, and, you know, I think big thing for me is you brought this up about your sabbatical epiphanies and that the overwhelm is still there even if you're not in the MRI tube or in the semester <laughs> or whatever it is. And so just kind of recognizing that. But for me too, I'm starting a new job. So I'm experiencing a lot of overwhelm. Yes. So many mm. new things with a new job. Yes. My goodness. Yeah. So tell me, cause you had this epiphany recently, but mm-hmm. apart, like in a, what's working for you? Okay, cool. Um, You know, I want to say one thing which is just related to you being in that MRI tube, and it reminds me of Jen Sincero saying, run towards fear. Fear hates it when you do that. And I feel like you did that. You ran towards fear and fear was like, oh, okay. (laughs) (laughs) I guess there's nothing to do here. You pushed through it. That's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm I'm, I'm so happy I'm not going back in the tube. Oh, my goodness. That's wonderful. Yeah. Um, so what's working for me with overwhelm? Yeah, so my recent realization, just as a quick summary in case anyone doesn't remember, um, was I went on sabbatical and all the things on my calendar and to-do list that you would think would have been the sources of overwhelm were gone and I still felt exactly the same level of overwhelm. <laughs> and um, <laughs> It's like, that's what you think though. You think it's going to be fun. I know, I know. So, you know, it's it's... It's it's amazing how separated it actually is from the from the the things on your schedule. But of course, that's not to say like when you start a new job and all these new things are happening and you also have to go in the MRI, all those things totally do more, you know, you're more likely to be in a state of overwhelm when you have all those things, but it's still related to your your mind, like you're saying. You your mind is powerful and and all that. So anyway, what's working for me? Um I have a little list of reminders of things that help me stay in or get back into the mindset that I'm trying to be in. Um, And what things go on that list, I'm sure, would be very different for everyone. And I often refine them. And um, if if I'm reading the list and something's on there that doesn't resonate at all, I just get rid of it. Or if something new hits me, I I slap it on there. But just some examples. And this is also from Jen Sincero. She's my spirit animal. Um... Send out positive vibes to the universe. That's something on there. And just reading that reminds me, oh, yeah, if I try to be positive and send out positivity, it'll probably, you know, come back around, too. And I don't know, that's really helpful. And enjoy every moment Mm -hmm. and act as the person I see myself being, like embody whoever it is 
like like I am Jen Sincero. <laughs> I like to go around saying that. It's it's like obviously I'm not Jen Sincero, but what I'm saying no, is no, no, I if I, it, yeah. if if what would she be doing? What and 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 she is like an um an imagined version of how I want to handle. You know, I've made up it's it's kind of like I've talked about this phenomena of being an early professor and someone's like, "Can I have an extension?" and I've never even thought about what my late policy is and I say I think to myself, what would a professor who knows what she's doing do? And then I do that. And so it's kind of the same thing. I think, well, what would my vision of this successful author or my vision of a professor who knows what she's doing or my vision of someone who's super zen and got things under control, what would that person do in this situation? And I try to do that. So that's that's helpful. Um, so I don't know, some other things on my list. I choose to laugh and smile. I appreciate and truly truly focus on what's happening right now. Right now, that seems to really help me get out of overwhelm. Is because you know the problem with over the thing about overwhelm is you're like trying to think about these five things that you wish you could be doing at the same time, and obviously you can't. So if you can manage to choose one and focus on it, that really helps. So anyway, these again, these are like my personal what kind of helps me go in the right direction and get my mindset back pushing my strong mind pushing in the direction I want to push. So I, I, I like having these, this little list of things that helps. So I, I guess what's working for me is whenever I have a moment of, oh, this makes sense, this is a helpful, positive thing, I put it on there, and then whenever I'm not feeling in oh. the zone, I try to have that be a trigger to go read those things. And help Tom them. is helping, tipping out there. Exactly, like exactly. Because yes. like, once you're in the overwhelm, it's really hard to remember any of these things. So oh you need God, to have yes. already had them written down, or at least I do. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that's what's working for me. Okay, love it. And mine is really similar, I think. So I think the thing that's working for me is I'm getting a lot of practice. And I can feel <laughs> like, I mean, the MRI is like the extreme version, right? But uh-huh, I can just feel uh-huh. this like bubbling hysteria a lot of mm-hmm. the time in mm-hmm. this new job situation. Mm-hmm. So I think, and I think it's a little bit like what you're saying, but somehow I sort of think of it as like, like I get stuck in my brain. Do you know mm-hmm, what I mean? And sometimes mm-hmm. I need to get back into my body. Mm-hmm. Like that's the biggest oh, thing. Oh, I love that. That's great. And so, yeah. And so like in the MRI tube, this is so weird, but a good friend of mine, Jody, said something about her kids and like focusing on their feet oh. can sort of help. So I was like in the tube and I was trying to like wiggle each toe. Oh, Do you cool. know what I mean? And like... It, you know and I was like this is stupid this isn't gonna work you know what I mean but then it did work like I mean wow I didn't love the tube but then like you know what I mean? <laughs> but I you survived it yeah yeah and so sometimes just getting out of my brain mm-hmm. is helpful and I kind of have some like mantras sorry there's some rowdy stuff going on outside um there's some like mantras almost Ooh. do you know what I mean and yes. so like <sighs> Have I, I've told you about my obsession with this Arctic explorer called Tom Crean. Yes, you mentioned him. Yeah. So he must have been overwhelmed when he had to walk like this extreme distance or mm-hmm. when these like six men in a tiny boat had to like sail across whatever. So like, but he, there was like a play I saw of him and it was just like, just like one foot in front of the other. Mm-hmm. And he just kept counting to four as he was like going along. And so I think too, do you remember when I was moving to mm-hmm. Ireland? A friend of mine just kept saying one foot in front of the other, just like mm-hmm. and only focus on the next step. Mm-hmm. And that so sometimes doing that can be really helpful or mm-hmm. other mantras like the ones you're kind of describing or. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's super helpful. And it's sort of I like your that. brain is so fried when you're mm-hmm. overwhelmed. Like you said, you can't you can't reason yourself out of it. So you need like a shorthand, like mm-hmm. something to just like yeah. a reset or something mm-hmm. to kind of. Yeah, it seems like a lot of these things are helping your mind not try to think about 20 things at once and say, I'm just going to work on moving this toe or I'm just going to take the next step or I'm going to be here focusing on the thing that I'm doing right now. And that's it. You know, whatever it is that helps you get there, it's to like quiet all the thoughts. Yeah, because overwhelm is powerful, the powerful Mm -hmm. mind. So, Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, yeah. So what what are you working on then? Well, I'm working on um, Ralph has this cool idea for helping with overwhelm that I haven't really explored fully yet. And the idea is that when you're in the state of overwhelm, you think, "Am I in danger? Like, what are is there some actual danger going on here? Am I gonna 
mm. not have enough food? Am I going to be eaten by a wolf? And normally the answer is no. You know, there's not actually an immediate danger. We're just talking about these five things you feel like you need <laughs> I to do. hear about the time when you didn't. Huh? <laughs> you were like, no, I am going to be. <laughs> that, when there's times that you're like, normally yeah. you're not going to eat by a wolf. But you're not, you know? Time. So like the, no. the backing up, the zooming out, and the kind of mm. putting it all in context, helping remember that the world is a big place, that... Um, there's lots going on in our life besides this particular, these, yes. these things, you know, just like zooming out and putting things in more context. Um, yeah, that, that kind of approach seems like That's, it would be really useful. I haven't really tried it yet, but Ralph uses it and I want to use it too. Do you know, that's really interesting because my um, daughter, we got her a book and it was like, oh my God, I can't remember the name. I'll look at her properly so we can put it in the show notes. Uh-huh. But it was basically like um, like talking to your amygdala and like your amygdala is like, okay, we're about to be eaten by a tiger or we're right. about to die or whatever. And just being like, giving it a name and being like, okay, stand down, Maurice, mm-hmm. we're good. Like, I know uh. this is a stressful test, but it's not tiger situation. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. thanks mm-hmm. for keeping me safe, but you don't need to like warn me about this terrible danger or whatever I love it. Is. it. And that's such a good example because, like, yes, you're doing a great job, Maurice, the amygdala, if we are needing a ton of adrenaline to run from this tiger. But we're actually in a situation where adrenaline's not helpful, we don't need to run from anything, and we just need to, actually, what we need to do is be more calm um, and relax. So Totally. So telling Maurice, thank you, but this is not what we need right now. Yeah, stand down. I love that. Yeah. And it was really helpful for her, like, to have just, like, a, you know, what is, because worry, like, you can't ever say, just turn off all your worries, right? Because right. then that's ridiculous, right? And we need mm-hmm. it, and it's helpful, but, yeah, mm-hmm. when is it less productive? Exactly, exactly. Mm-hmm. Trying to recalibrate, um, put things in context. So, yeah. anyway. And it's like a you? fine line, right, between... Because also being dismissive of yourself isn't always... No, right, no, right? you so don't want to like, be dismissive. I mean, it's it's not that... When I say put it in context, I'm not saying no, no, I don't mean, dismiss yes. it, but I'm saying realize that it's um, it's something that you want to do, that you want to figure right. out, um, but it's also not something that is going to be the end of the world if you don't do it right 100%. now, along with those other five things, or I don't know, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, we're not talking about the end of the world. I don't know. Yes. No, <laughs> anyway, yes, totally. What about you? What are you working on? So, my biggest, like... The biggest struggle I have is storytelling in my head. Do you know what I mean? And like, this is where like my brain just races off and creates Mm -hmm. this whole narrative about what's happening. Mm -hmm. And it's not, you know what I mean? Like, it's kind of like what we've been talking about. And so like, obviously the MRI tube is like, oh my God, I'm being buried alive and I'm about to die. Not like I'm in this tube for 30 minutes and every, like, this is in a hospital setting and they can take, like, Mm -hmm. do you know what I mean? And Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so with my current situation, it's like, oh my God, oh my God, everybody else knows what they're doing and I don't know what I'm doing and I'm never going to be able to do this job and I'll never figure out this new, like, you know, communication system or whatever. And like, it's just the storytelling and right. it just like goes off to the races and it's mm-hmm. so hard. Mm-hmm. And I guess like, you know, the working stuff is kind of like all that stuff, like trying to interrupt that. Yes, and get oh, back I love the word it. interrupt. Yeah. Yeah, but it's so hard because my it's brain so is really good at that and creating scary narratives and running off to the races with like... Mm-hmm you're never going to be able to do this and what's going to happen the first time that you have to do blah, blah. And it's just, oh my God, it's exhausting. It's exhausting. And I love, like, very early in the episode, you said your mind is powerful and we're kind of talking about both sides of that. Like, how it's really, it's powerful enough to make you feel like you're being chased by a wolf or you're buried alive when you're not. But it's also powerful enough for you to say, I'm going to go into that tube now rather than have to deal with it later. Right, And I'm going to think about my toes and try to calm myself down. So, I mean, yeah, like, if you were talking to anybody else about, oh man, I'm never going to know how this communication system works. You would tell anybody who was in that situation, of course you are, two weeks from now, yeah. a month from now, it's not going to be an issue, but it feels like it is in the moment. Or like yeah. you were talking about your commute, like, yeah, it's a pain to figure out the train system, but you're going to have that down like the back of your hand in no time. And you're going to be like, what does anyone do without this commute when I listen to all my podcasts or I don't know, whatever you figure out, you know? So like, and I know you know this, logically, it's going to get much easier. I don't. 
Do you know what I mean? Because even when you're saying it, I'm like, oh, yeah. Because I've probably figured out other commutes before and then they sure. just become integrated into your... Or like when we started at Humboldt and you're like, I will never know where everything is. And oh, yeah. It just became... Yeah. Sure. Yeah. I, I mean, I remember starting at Humboldt and there was so many acronyms. Everybody was throwing oh, around acronyms. Gosh, and so yes. you couldn't figure out what they meant. And you were like, oh, my goodness. And then... Um, yeah, and just, you know, who do you reach out to when you need anything? Like, yes. Like, um, we were talking about um, the first, uh, so we have pro cards for buying things with our research money, and then you have to submit a pro card reconciliation form at the end of the month to explain what you bought. And uh, the first time I was like, I just have no idea where the form is, or how to find <laughs> yes. it, or how you do anything. Um, but, you know, then you do, and then it's a non issue. Um, yeah. And so we've seen that before. Doesn't mean it's not hard each time, but at least logically, I think you can be confident that you will figure out all these things and you'll understand. You know, like, why wouldn't you? You figured them right. out every I, other time. Right. And I keep thinking, like, I won't feel like this forever. Mm -hmm. And that's, yeah. And it is. And it's like, it's weird starting a new job because it's exciting and like, you know, kind of buzzy as well. But then the downside is just that, like mild hysteria all the time totally. so yeah i mean every single thing is so much harder you're like i need to print something but first i need to connect my computer to the internet and then i need to connect it to the printer and then which right. printer is it and then where is the printer and i actually don't have a key to get into the printer room and like you know yes. normally once you've got that under control you just print something it becomes a one one task instead of 25 tasks of different subtasks of learning to use the printer um, totally and i think it's weird because i think I mean, I haven't been like, well, I want to be more conscious about it. But ever since you said that thing, Which I'm like, thing? you know, before about the sabbatical and mm. about the overwhelm, wherever you go, there it is kind of thing. <laughs> um, like it's, that's really calling me to dealing with it. Because mm -hmm. I think I'm always like, well, I don't need to because someday I just won't be overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there won't be overwhelming mm -hmm. things happening. And that day is never going to come. So yeah, like just it's not going to come unless I think you I've, bring it. Yeah, right. It's, it's and like such it's a not, good analogy. I think you, you right because you think there's going to be external factors are going to happen, so then you mm -hmm. just won't be stressed anymore. And mm -hmm. I think like more and more because sorry, this is a bit of a sideways metaphor, but even with parenting, because you kind of are like okay, but like once I solve all the problems, and it's like there, you're never going to do that. Like you have to just help your child navigate all of the problems not mm -hmm, you can't mm -hmm. get rid of them do you know what I mean and that makes so, sense yeah yeah I love that I love that and I really feel like like you said at the, I'm so glad you shared this story of your MRI experience oh and how <laughs> I mean it sounds absolutely horrible but I love how the the doctor said your mind can overwhelm the the the, me the medication right because I was hoping that external thing was just going to sort it right. out like I take the meds right and then, yeah and then you said, okay, I'm going to have to do something myself. And then you did. Right. What a great right. example. And I love that. Yeah. So, yeah, there's hope. There's definitely hope. But and little steps. I think, I think it comes back to the one step at a time thing. You know, it's like, mm -hmm. I don't know. I mean, I've definitely felt like I've had times where I'm like, man, I've been trying to work on this for years and I've made so little progress. It's oh, just never going to happen. Might as well give up. But then it's like, no, no, no. Actually, if you look... Instead of having it be, have you achieved a state of entire enlightenment or not? <laughs> if you're instead like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. oh, actually, I am more calm more of the time or whatever. I don't know how you want to quantify it. But it's like, if you look at it in a different way, you have made progress. You know what I mean? Like, I think yeah. we've both made lots of progress. And even if, like, you never stop being overwhelmed, like, if you can recognize it's a finite thing. And it sure. may, you know what I mean? Like, because my biggest problem is thinking, like, being in the MRI tube and being like, this is my new reality forever. Like, right. this, you know what I mean? Right. Or I'm starting this new job and I'm going to feel freaked out and like, I don't know what I'm doing forever and ever. Like, that's the problem. And so right. recognizing it's a finite state mm -hmm. is also, mm -hmm. that's really helping me. Mm -hmm. I love that. Like, there probably will always be times when we feel overwhelmed, mm -hmm. but we're going to get better and better, hopefully, at getting out of them and minimizing mm -hmm. them and having them be less overwhelmed or whatever it is. I yeah. love that. And it's certainly not, like you say, whatever the, the moment of 
feeling overwhelmed doesn't mean we're going to feel overwhelmed forever. Yes, yes. Because mm-hmm. that's my, yeah, I'm, I don't know. It's just weird to have been alive for quite some time and still be like, no, this is now forever and ever. And not remembering <laughs> like that feeling. So, yeah. Yeah. And no, we'll just I celebrate don't. every day we're not in an MRI tube. That's oh, I love it. Yeah. I love it. Celebrate yes. every day we're not in an MRI tube. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Thanks, Claire. Thank you, Ruth. Thanks so much for joining us on the Professor Podcast with Ruth and Claire. We're delighted to have you as a listener and we would love to hear from you. And if you want to email us, our address is contactprofessorpodcast at gmail.com. We'd love to hear any of your suggestions for future shows or professor quotes that you might want to share with us, or even just things that have come up for you when you were listening to previous episodes. And if you've been enjoying the podcast, we would love if you would spread the word. So the best way to spread word is by telling people, you know, if you think they should listen to it, or you can leave us a review wherever you listen to your podcasts. Thanks so much for joining us and we'll see you next time.